Hey, what up? It's Tampa Brad back at you with the number 19 of the 20 books for 2020, 20 book, 20 point plan. Just kidding. Um, book number 19 is Relentless by Timothy S. Grover. Um, and I love this book for a multitude of reasons. Number one is recommended by um, one of my mentors, Owen Cook, AKA RSD Tyler. And um, the book is written by Tim Grover, who was the coach to, uh, I may botch this, but it was, uh, I believe, Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James, and a ton of other NBA All-Stars. And since he had so much success in the NBA, he actually wound up branching out to uh, other professional sports. I know he coaches some uh, MLB pitchers, and I think even some NFL players as well. And what the book defines and what Tim Grover does in the book is he actually kind of cracks open the hard shell that is around the world of the, the top tier professional athletes in the world. I mean, if you think about the level at which somebody like uh, Michael Jordan, for example, has to perform on a not not just a weekly basis, but a almost daily basis, if you think about how many games are in a, in a basketball season, um, Somebody like Michael Jordan, who I believe won, five, I'm not super big into basketball, but either five or six championships, he, his ability to achieve success and then stay hungry and keep going is phenomenal. And so Tim Grover was actually a large part of being able to cultivate that and cultivate the mental ability to go to that level that he needed to go to to achieve that success and then keep him going. So. What Tim Grover does in this book is not lay out an instruction manual. This book is not an instruction manual. Uh, it is a mindset manual. And really, it's, it's not even so much of a manual as it is a, an anecdote from the best uh, primer of athletes in the business. He, Tim Grover really doesn't teach very much. He primes athletes to do what they already know is the right thing. So he kind of gives them permission to go to that level of, hey, bro, you know that you might have a 60 minute workout scheduled. You know you should be doing a 90 minute workout. Let's just do the 90 minute workout because we know that's what we have to do to get to the level that you really want to be at. So what Tim Grover in this book does is he actually gives the reader, you, permission to go to that level and he talks about what that actually looks Looks like and I got a couple notes out of the book because he as I was listening through it again today just to kind of prep real quick for this video because I haven't read the book for probably eight or nine months but it stuck with me so poignantly um, that I really wanted to have it on this list um, and so something else I wrote down is that he talks about what a cleaner is and so he says that there are basically three levels of high performance athletes there's a cooler a closer and a cleaner and so what a cooler does is he keeps things he keeps things cool you know he can he can do the things that he has to do in a game he can you know make the shots that he needs to make kind of just keep the game on pace but when, when you need him in a pinch he tends to not necessarily be able to come through. He can sometimes, but not the reliable person that you need. A closer is someone who, when you need him, he's there for you, but you have to tell him what to do. You have to call on him and then he's there. He's not just there proactively. And then a cleaner, the top tier athlete, he's just there. He cleans up the messes and he's proactively looking for the messes to clean them up before they even become an issue. And so what Tim Grover does is he compares them to uh, a janitor, ironically. And uh, I wanna draw parallels between this and another book I'm, I'm gonna talk about, The War of Art, later in this video, but uh, kind of a self reminder here. But uh, what he does is he compares being a cleaner to being a janitor. And the funny thing is most people would think, oh, a janitor is the, the lowest person on the totem pole, right? Think about it this way. Who other than the janitor knows everything about everyone? Who knows everyone's deep dark secrets? Who knows who's drinking in the office and leaving beer cans in their drawers? Who knows who's leaving condom wrappers in their wastebasket? Who knows who uh, is staying late? Who knows who's going home early? The janitor knows everything about everyone in the building. Also, who can get to anywhere? Who has the master key that can get him anywhere in the place? The janitor does. So what's interesting is, uh, Tim Grover compares being a cleaner, which is how he describes uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James later in the book, is he 
describes them as, uh, in a way, working stiffs. And the reason I love that is actually because of another book, which is ironically higher on the list, which is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. We'll get to that in a later video. But the two things that, that Tim Grover and Stephen Pressfield have in common in their two books is that they describe what a pro looks like. And a pro is not a prima donna, although they have their some prima donna tendencies and really they know what they want and they're gonna have it, whether you like it or not. But what they are is they're a working stiff. A pro is a working stiff. They go to work, they put in the work. They're not fancy about it. They don't need a fancy title. They just want to do their work. They're obsessed with getting their work done because they want the end result so badly. Another thing that Tim Grover covers in this book, which I thought was extremely interesting and is actually, I think, very countercultural, is we're seeing a lot of people um, saying, you know, do what you love, you know, do something that you're that you're passionate about, do something that you know you enjoy doing. You know, when when you enjoy what you're doing, there's no such thing as a day at work, right? Well, what Tim Grover says is that it actually doesn't matter whether you like the work that's involved in getting to where you want to be. All you have to do is want where you're going so bad that the work is insignificant. Uh, this is actually very similar to a, uh, a BNI topic. So the former owner of BNI Tampa, Tom Fleming, has what he calls the, the Tom Fleming uh, model of, motiva of human motivation, I think he calls it. He's funny. He probably got it from somewhere else to be appropriate. I like Tom, but he reappropriates ideas sometimes, which is cool. I do the same thing. It's all good. But uh, he calls it Tom Fleming's model of human motivation. What he says is a person will have goals, right? So if you think of a person right here and then their goals are up here and then there's obstacles in between them and the goals and you can draw it as kind of like bars or like mountains or however you want to draw it so when a person can see their goals they just go and achieve their goals but what happens when an obstacle comes up that's taller than their goals and blocks their line of sight from them to the goals well they either have one of two options either they need to get higher above the obstacle they need to make the obstacle smaller or they need to make their goals bigger most of the time, making the goals bigger is the most effective way to do it. And so that's what Tim Grover describes in this book, is that the goals of the real cleaners, as he calls them, are so high and they're so insatiable for the goals that the goals actually are on a sliding scale and they're constantly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Because as the goals, you know, as they achieve this goal, now the obstacle becomes, okay, maintain that level and go up. Because everybody else has seen what you're able to do, now they're gonna follow you and, and stay on board. Now you need to be the head goose even more, break the wind further and go even higher. So what it calls on people to do is keep their goals moving up, 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 because the obstacles move up, up, up as they achieve their goals. So just jumping back to my notes here. Uh, another thing that he says is you can be unstoppable if you want to be. And he describes a cleaner as unstoppable. You can be unstoppable if you want to be. It is not an inborn trait. It is something that you choose to tap into or not. That is something that I love. I'm a huge proponent of this and I try to tell this to as many people as possible. Almost anything that you could want to do in the entire world, you can learn how to do. Short of something that you need a massive physical gift to do, like say being 6'7 to play in the NBA. Anything else you can think of, and by the way, you don't even need to be 6'7 to play in the NBA. I think Steph Curry's like 6'2 or something like that. Don't quote me on that, I don't know much about basketball. But from what I understand, you cannot even be exceptionally tall and still play in the NBA if you want it bad enough. And if you're willing to do the work that it requires to get to that massive goal. Remember how we talked about the goals being huge anything in the world you can learn. We'll, we'll cover another book later in this series that's called The Game by Neil Strauss. Dating the type of people that you want to date. If you're a man, dating beautiful women, even if you're a total chump who has never talked to a girl in your life, you can learn to talk to women and to date the most attractive women in the world. Plenty of men have done it. Literally hundreds if not thousands of men have done it before you. It's a skill set that you can learn and that carries over to any other thing in the world that you could possibly want to learn. As you can tell, this book gets me super fired up because I'm super passionate about this. I'm a huge fan of nurture over nature. I think that a lot of people like to write themselves off as, you know, I, I can't do this because of I was born this way or, you know, it's in my genes or something like that. And frankly, like, I think I wanna make sure there's not any kids around. I think that's straight bullshit. I think you're selling yourself short of your God-given potential if you give yourself that out, frankly. Like, I wanna be real with you here. That's what these videos are about is being real. And if you are giving the excuse to the world to not give them the gift that you're potentially able to give, 
by just saying, oh, I was just born that way or it's not in my genes or that's my inborn tendency, that's a load and you know it. So getting back to my notes here, uh, you don't have to love the hard work, you just have to crave the end result like we talked about. All right, another thing that uh, was super impactful and that really just struck a chord with me <clears throat> is that early on in the book, Tim Grover says that when, uh, I believe it was Dwayne Wade, when he was on the Miami Heat, he tore his Achilles, or it might've been Kobe, I, you know, I'm not being into basketball, like I said, so I tend to mix these names up. Um, I think it was Kobe though. He tore his Achilles tendon during uh, the NBA Finals, actually. And so he had something like two or three games left and he needed to be playing at a certain level in order for uh, the Lakers to go on to win the championship. And he wanted that ring, so he was gonna make it happen. So he called Tim Grover, they go and they train together. And what Tim says to him is not plan it out perfectly. What he says is, don't think. And in my note, I put this in all caps because this was so, so critical. <clears throat> and I've seen this play out in many, many different ways. What he says is, don't think. And what that means is, you already know on some fundamental level exactly what you need to do in order to get to where you wanna go. If you have a vision of where you wanna go, you already kind of know how to get there. You don't need to plan it out. You don't need to be plotting. Like the, the idea of plotting or planning things out or, or um, coming up with the plan or setting up my website or setting up my social media, that's called, that's a code and we all know what the code is. That's code for procrastination. That's code for not actually doing the work. You don't need to think about it, you just need to do the work. That's a huge point that Tim Grover says. And he goes on from there to talk about how everything you need is already inside of you. And he also says, I love this, he says that going for your massive goals and becoming a cleaner is not about talent and it's not about knowledge, it's about raw animal instinct. This ties in with the don't think part and uh, this is actually gonna tie into a couple other books that I'm gonna talk about, especially uh, Levels of Energy and uh, Power Versus Force by Frederick Dodson where you can on some level intuit what it is that you need to do in almost any given circumstance. You can figure out just intuitively because your subconscious brain is actually an extremely powerful basically supercomputer, you can figure out what it is that you need to do to achieve achieve whatever end result you're looking for. And there was one more note that I really wanted to hit because I thought it was super impactful. Hopefully I wrote it down. Ah, there we go, okay. So he says that the book, uh, Relentless, isn't going to tell you what to do. And I put that in all caps again because that's extremely important to understand about this book. It is insights only. And then he goes on to say, no one can tell you what to go after because how could they possibly know what you wanna go after? And the, the implicit understanding here is, once you know what you wanna go after, you kinda already know what it is that you need to do. And by kinda already know, I mean you absolutely know exactly what you need to do, what steps you need to take to get where you want to be. So you just need to, to take the steps. You just need to not think. You just need to trust your instincts and go and take the steps to get to you where you need to go. So, the book Relentless, as you can tell, I get super fired up about it. I really enjoy this book. I know you are going to love it. And uh, as I'm trying to remind you in these videos that these, it's, it's not, you know, if you just take my word for, um, don't think, it's like, you should not just take my word for that. You should go in and dig into this book and see what you get out of it. I could be completely wrong. I could be misunderstanding this. If you take my word just point blank because it's on a video, you are dumb and I pity you. So dig into it yourself. This should be a catalyst for you to actually get into the book and get something yourself out of it. So dig into the book Relentless by Tim S. Grover. We'll put the, the cover of what it looks like in the thumbnail or whatever. Um, also, if you're not already, follow me on Instagram at Tampa Brad. There's a lot of day-to-day -day value being posted there. Um, a lot about these books in the interim between the other videos. So actually, if you follow me there, you would already know what all 20 books are before I even let them out on YouTube. So you can get kind of a sneak peek there. Also hit the subscribe button uh, and then hit the bell next to it. If you don't hit the bell, you're not gonna get the updates and you're frankly not gonna see my videos because there's so much going on in the YouTube subscriber feed that you have to hit the bell and get the notification in order to really even know that I'm posting. Otherwise, you know, four or five videos are gonna go by and you're gonna be like, oh crap, I missed these. And then you're gonna have to play catch up and I'm getting more and more long-winded, so you're gonna have to watch like hours of videos to get caught up. So don't make that mistake. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell, okay? 
Thank you for watching. I appreciate your attention. I will see you in the next video, which I'm very excited for. Peace.